Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Secret Base figure preview video. Now before we begin I do have to say a massive thank you to Ryan Kirkwood for going out in person and snapping these gorgeous high res pics. Show Ryan some love in the comments below because without him this series literally wouldn't be possible. Now if you are looking to pre-order your very own Moon Knight, he is available from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and a points based reward system. Now Hot Toys usually will take their time putting up a pre-order for a brand new character. They must be super confident in Moon Knight to have this guy ready for episode 2. Two. Meanwhile, we're still sitting here waiting for Kate Bishop and Clint Barton from Hawkeye. Very curious. Nevertheless, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm still very happy to have Moon Knight. He does come with a full array of mummified hands. They're kind of all wrapped up in bandages. Now, of course, they are fully sculpted and they are all white. It's pretty much the running theme for Moon Knight. The entire suit is comprised of multiple shades of white. Now there are some washers down in the crevices. I would have loved to have seen some actual fabric wrapped around some hands. And that's also going to be a running theme here. There seems to be a distinct lack of bandage-like fabric. However, the array of hands are more than serviceable. You've got a bunch of different poses, fists, open hands, and a ton of accessories to put in them. Now, my buddy Robert Meyer Burnett told me these are called crescent darts, not moonerangs. Nevertheless, you do get a bunch of different sizes, ranging from the larger ones all the way down to the really small ones that you can slot in between his fingers. You will see those a little bit later in the video. They are, though, pretty straightforward. They literally just look like flat gold paint. Now, I would have expected to see some pitting and some rough texture on the surface. When this guy is eventually released in 2023, I wouldn't be surprised if they add that on there. Now, Hot Toys, we need to talk. Why this base? I can't be the only one who absolutely loathes this display base. You need to go for a smaller hexagonal base. If the hexagonal base can support characters like the Mark 85 in mid-air, then it definitely can do that for Moon Knight. I do at the very least like the printing on the surface. Now they've also decided to go with light up eyes, which fits in the series when he dons the suit his eyes do look like they are emitting some light. We will discuss how that affects the figure in just a second. I'm pleased to report though that they have done a split cut boot design. It's all fully sculpted, which I'm perfectly fine with, and it's a slightly darker shade. It's not that pure pristine white like some of the other parts of the suit. I love the way they look. They've kind of got this sneaker tread aesthetic along the bottom, and the seam is almost unnoticeable, especially from an angle like right there. Now, moving up to the legs, I'm very curious as to why Hot Toys made some of the decisions that they made. Don't get me wrong once again, I'm still really happy to have him, and overall he looks great. But why are they using this synthetic rubbery material for the pants? In the series, the suit does look like it's very organic, very free-flowing. Yet here it looks very structured, almost solid. He also has a knee pad that is a separate attachment, and it looks to be made of rubbery plastic. This is exactly what I'd expect from Hot Toys. It makes perfect sense. Now, up here at the waist, you can see a sash that hangs down. This was the fabric I thought the entire outfit was going to be made from. Nice and lightweight, a ton of texture, it's actually material. This is kind of like the fabric they use for the Jedi robes. But nevertheless, they've only used it, it seems, on the sash and on the cape. 
Now, does it affect how the figure looks overall? No, not really. It's just a little bit more rigid and structured than I thought it was going to be. Now, there is a ton of texture on his pants, plus some hieroglyphs as well. I guess we'll have to wait and see as the show progresses if those symbols have any meaning. Now, honestly, I really just like the way they look and it adds some visual interest. If it was just flat white, it would look a little bit boring. Same thing can be said for that little crescent dart on his knee. It's a nice pop of gold on an otherwise very white lower half. He also has a moon symbol on his belt in a nice metallic gold, and then it extends up around his belt area, which is made from that same fabric as the sash that hangs down. Now, as you can clearly see, there is a big difference between the sash material and his upper torso. They've basically made it out of two different things. The underlying suit is a continuation of his pants all the way up, and it's that synthetic material. It's a great way of cheating and getting a ton of texture on the surface without actually having to layer multiple different sections of fabric over one another. It looks great and the illusion definitely tricks the eye. But on top of that, you have this rubbery chest plate. How is that going to affect articulation? Well, we'll have to wait and see when he comes out. But as it stands, it does look like it's a separate attachment that's kind of just been stuck onto his chest. Whereas the show in the suit does look a lot more seamless. Now that synthetic material extends onto his arms as well, and once again it does a great job of actually looking like fabric that's been layered over itself to wrap up his entire arm. He also of course has a gauntlet that's done in a grey, so it does break up the overall white look. He does have this gold kind of bracelet piece that goes around the top of his hand, and there are those smaller crescent darts I was telling you about. I really like this pose, the fact that you can actually slot them in between his fingers, it's a very nice touch, and it Kind of gives me Batman vibes from The Dark Knight Returns. You know how in Frank Miller's Batman story he slotted the Batarangs in between his fingers? This reminds me of that, which is definitely not a bad thing. I have seen a ton of parallels drawn between Batman and Moon Knight, saying almost that this is Marvel's version of Batman. It's a very different take, mind you, but so far I am kind of getting those vibes. All I can say is I love seeing this suit in action in the show. Now, as of yet, I don't know if you can remove the crescent dart from his chest. In the show, he does kind of pull them out of his chest. Now, in figure format, obviously he wouldn't be able to create multiple, but at the very least being able to remove one from the chest plate would be something that I would expect them to include. Now, I don't know how sturdy these crescent darts are in his hand, but as I said, I really like the way that looks. I also like the way he can grip on to the crescent dart, the larger one. It looks Awesome. I'm very happy with the array of accessories, at least based off what we've seen in the show so far. I wouldn't be surprised if as the show progresses and he uses and interacts with more stuff, Hot Toys could potentially update the listing and add more things. As for the cape, it looks great. It's all real fabric and it's fully wired. It looks as though there is some screen printing on the surface to, once again, create some visual interest. It's not just one flat bedsheet, there are a ton of lines and surface detail and texture all over it, so it doesn't look boring. You also do have a ton of wires to work with, it looks like there are a couple down the inside as well, not just around the edges. I'm very curious to see if you can splay it out to resemble the moon shape, just like we saw in that badass clip. Now one complaint that you may have is the hood. As you can see here, you can see right through it. The hood isn't attached to the cape or the rest of the suit, it is free floating. It's actually attached to the head sculpt and it's all fully sculpted. There is no fabric in the head or the hood section. I am perfectly fine with that. That means you can maximize articulation and at the correct angle in the correct poses, it will look completely seamless. Plus, 
Have you ever tried to pop a hood on top of a figure's head sculpt and it look good? I know I have, and it's very difficult to achieve. Even though he does have light up LED eyes, Hot Toys, thank you, thank you, thank you for going with white painted eyes. This means in the display, even when you don't have the LEDs turned on, he's going to look alive. If they'd just gone with translucent plastic like they have done for Iron Man in the past, it would have looked horrible. He would have looked lifeless, he would have looked dead. This is absolutely the way to do it going forward, including on your future Iron Man figures. It seems as though they are listening because, let's be honest, how would you even have this powered all the time without having wires running out from behind his head sculpt? I mean, hot toys don't even give you a way to actually have them on all the time. You have to use their goofy little button cell batteries and they die very quickly. I wouldn't be surprised if this head sculpt was magnetic. Usually when they do LED light up eyes, they go with a magnetic sculpt just to make it a little bit easier to work with, which means we will have a lot more range of motion out of that head sculpt. Now we still have to address one other thing, the moon diorama thing in the background. I guess it ties into the display base and I'm going to pair up my complaints. I really dislike the display base and I don't really see a purpose for this moon thing either. I mean it looks cool, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, wouldn't you have rathered a diorama rooftop display base so you can actually have him leaping across the rooftops? Or something Egyptian themed or a Khonshu display base with a nice printed background? There are so many possibilities. Ryan said in person this thing screamed as though it was made from clamshell material. And yeah, it kind of looks that way to me as well. There are just so many other things that would have been really straightforward and simple for them to execute, but they decided to go with this. At the end of the day, Moon Knight himself looks great. Some questionable decisions have been made, but I'm still really happy they're making him, and I cannot wait to review him on the channel. As I said at the intro, if you are looking to grab him, he is available for pre-order from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and a points based reward system. While you are down there, check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.